When we think back to our high school friends, we often remember the happy times and our youthful days. In today's story, a man named Xie Diao invited his high school classmate, whom he hadn't seen for two years, to a restaurant for dinner. Little did he know that his classmate Chou Kaixuan had taken a ten-hour train ride from Chongqing to Beijing with a sinister intention to end his life. Welcome to Red Eastern True Crime. Let's dive into this story. On June 14, 2018, at 6 p.m., Diao hosted a dinner for his high school friend Chou at a restaurant near the university campus. Diao was in a good mood and ordered several dishes for Chou. After they were seated, Diao took a photo of Chou and shared it in their classmates' WeChat group. Chou then replied with a happy emoji. Less than ten minutes after being seated and with only one dish served, Chou suddenly stood up, held a knife, and lunged at Diao's chest. Shocked, Diao covered his chest with both hands, stood up, and stepped back. But Chou quickly advanced and made another step to Diao's neck. Injured, Diao fell face down to the ground. Just as Chou was about to walk away, he turned around, bent down, and stabbed Diao repeatedly in the back while grabbing his hair to slash his neck twice. When Chou was assured that Diao had no chance of survival, he dropped the knife and raised his hands in a victorious gesture. People in the restaurant panicked. And no one dared to intervene, except for one male customer who tried to hit Chou with a chair but missed. Chou and Diao were both from Chongqing, China. They were not only classmates but also roommates in the same dormitory. Chou's family was well off, and his father was a physics teacher. Chou had a reserved personality and rarely initiated conversations with classmates. However, He always excelled academically. His dream was to attend one of China's top universities, such as Tsinghua or Peking University. Unfortunately, a 30-point difference in test scores led him to enroll in the 12th-ranked Sichuan University. Despite Chou's dissatisfaction with his scores, he was still considered a high achiever at his school. In 2012, just two months after starting at Sichuan University. Chou failed a psychological evaluation and couldn't get into his desired program. Consequently, he chose to drop out and return to Chongqing to study again with the same goal of getting into a top university. However, the next year, his results didn't meet his expectations. This time, Chou was accepted to Xi'an Jiao Tong University, ranked tenth in the country, for a combined bachelor's and master's program. During his third year at the university, Chou faced the challenges due to his excessive gaming habits. He failed several exams, was transferred to a regular class, and lost his chance to pursue a master's degree. After graduating in 2017, Chou found a job at a software company in another city, earning a monthly salary of 8,000 RMB, which is about $1,200, which was decent for a fresh graduate. However, he became satisfied with the company's future prospect, frequent business travel, and dealing with wealthy clients, which led him to quit. Chou's subsequent job search did not go well. Frustrated and disillusioned with big city life, he decided to take the civil service exam in a suburban county near his hometown. Even chose the relatively obscure birth control department. In May 2018. Chou was devastated to learn that he hadn't passed the exam, sinking him into a deep emotional low. Diao had decent grades in high school, but Chou's was slightly better. They weren't super close friends, but they got along well. Diao even invited Chou to his house for dinner once. After high school, Diao attended the 39th-ranked Xi'an University of Electronic Science and Technology. Which happened to be in the same city as Chou's university. Later, through hard work, Diao got into the graduate school of the University of Chinese Academic of Sciences. Diao came from a financially struggling background. His father had battled a serious illness, and after recovering, began working as a truck driver. 
Dale's mother traveled with his father to take care of him. At the time of the incident, Dale was a month away from graduation. What deep resentment led Cho to commit such a horrible act against his high school friend? In January 2016, both Cho and Dale attended a high school class reunion where they played a game of werewolf. During the game, they had a disagreement, and Cho later told his mother that Dial insulted him for hours, calling him autistic and criticizing his family. These hurtful memories haunted Cho for two years. But when other classmates were asked about the argument, three of them couldn't remember a fight between Cho and Dial, and one classmate vaguely remembered a minor disagreement, but it wasn't anything major. Their game of werewolf only lasted about an hour. So it is unlikely that Dial would have spent hours insulting Cho. During a court hearing on May 24, 2019, Cho stated that the reason he killed Dial was because in a previous case, he had posted a picture of himself drinking coke on a WeChat group, and Dial accused him of showing off, triggering memories of Dial's insults from two years earlier. However, after examining the chat records of the WeChat group, It was discovered that Dial's reply was actually a playful response to another classmate's previous post about eating crayfish. On June 12, 2018, just a month after failing the civil service exam, Cho took a 10-hour train ride to reach Beijing. He stayed in a budget hotel near Dial's campus. Over the next three days, he visited Beijing National Museum and the zoo, unable to bring a knife on the train. Cho had the knife shipped to his hotel that he bought online. When asked by the judge why he spent a few days sightseeing in Beijing, Cho explained that he knew he would lose his freedom after carrying out his plan, so he wanted to relax first. On June 14th, Cho texted Diao, claiming that he had found a new job that the company was sending him to Beijing for training at its headquarter. Diao texted his girlfriend. Mentioning his plan to take his high school friend out for dinner that night, and suggesting they eat Beijing roast duck, Cho declined the offer, insisting on finding a restaurant closer to his campus. Diao's girlfriend also advised him not to drink too much if he got carried away while chatting with his friend. Cho and Diao's home in Chongqing were only a mile apart, but for a year after the incident, Diao's parents didn't receive any apology. During the trial. Cho's lawyer repeatedly emphasized that Cho had turned himself in, arguing that Cho had a mental disorder and requesting a psychiatric evaluation. With a cold stare, Cho told the court that he wouldn't apologize or pay compensation. When the judge asked if he had anything to say, Cho simply said, "Quote: Please sentence me to death and execute me immediately." After the trial. Dial's parents took to the streets and started a petition, gathering signatures from thousands of people calling for death penalty for Cho. Two months later, the court sentenced Cho to death for premeditated murder. Although Cho had a neurosis, there was no evidence of mental impairment during the crime, and he was considered legally responsible. His actions, such as buying the knife online. Avoiding the subway to the roast duck restaurant to avoid the security checks, returning to the scene to confirm Dial's death with additional attacks, and making a victorious gesture, all indicated a clear state of mind. In January 2021, a year and a half later, Cho was executed in Beijing. Law enforcement officials denied Dial's parents' request to witness the execution. In high school. Cho was an outstanding student with a strong competitive drive. He couldn't handle his own failures and resented seeing his former classmates do better. Over time, he became hypersensitive and thought everyone he knew was laughing at him. When Diao tried to offer encouragement, Cho took it as a deliberate provocation. Cho projected all of his disappointments and frustrations onto Diao, such as the loss of his graduate school opportunity. His job struggles and even his failure to secure a remote government position. Whenever life didn't go his way, he associated it with Diao's attempts to motivate him. Every post Diao made on WeChat 
and every unrelated conversation in their friends' group triggered his anger and resentment. Cho envied Diao's cheerful personality, his wide circle of friends, and the promising high-paying job he was about to get. Cho heard a voice in his head debating whether to kill Diao, kill himself, or take someone with him. Diao was a month away from graduation, had already received a job offer from a well-known technology company in Beijing for an AI position with an annual salary of $75,000. If not for the tragic incident, Diao and his girlfriend might have started a family by now. Diao's mother recalled that, after the class reunion in 2016, Diao mentioned that Cho wasn't doing well. Considering Cho's excellent past performance and bright future, it was a bit unfortunate, and Diao had hoped to help him. How do you feel about Cho's violence at the restaurant? Do you think his mental problems were underestimated? Please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel.